Welcome back, mathematicians. So we are going to go over the next topic, which is expanding algebraic expressions. So when we expand algebraic expressions, we want to use the distributive property. The distributive property is just repeated addition of a grouping of an expression. For example, let's say that I was multiplying 4 by 2. Okay. Multiplication is also called repeated addition. So this is really mean, what this really means is I'm adding four twice, which gives me eight. So when you were younger, you were taught to memorize that two times four is eight and kind of skip this whole process. The distributive property works in a similar way. If you had two times X plus five, okay, that means you're adding X plus five twice. So x plus 5 and x plus 5. And when you combine like terms like you did in the last lesson, you get 2x plus 10. Distributive property says that you can skip that step and distribute in a 2 using multiplication. So 2 times x is 2x and two times positive five is positive 10. So either way, you get to the same answer, okay? But there's no kind of steps that you can do in your head um, until you've practiced this more. So this might not be the first time you've seen it, but this is why the distributive property works. What we have here is uh, an example of kind of the distributive property. So. If you did two times three plus five, the order of operations says that we would add three and five together to get eight, and two times eight would be 16. You can also multiply each of those by two and still get 16. So it's another way to represent why the um, distributive property works. In here, we're gonna show the distributive property using a bar model. So, we're gonna do the problem one third times x plus five. And my x is in blue and my five is in red. So I'm gonna represent the bar x plus five um, as this rectangle, right? With x in blue and five in red. Now we don't know how big x is. I made it the same length as five. Really it could be like all the way over there, a huge rectangle. But they don't give us x and we don't have to find it. So I'm just representing it with this one here. If I'm multiplying this by one third, that means I'm really cutting it into thirds. So I'm cutting each of these bars into thirds and only a third of them is what I'm keeping. So one third of X and then one third of five. Okay. Now these are not like terms, so I can't combine them together, but I can do one third times five to get five thirds. So that would be my answer for that one, one third X plus five thirds. Last example um, is negative three times negative two thirds A plus one fifth, and then minus six A. Um, so my first step is going to be to distribute. And let me make this kind of bolder so you can see that it's two thirds A and six A. Okay. So I can distribute just like a, a normal fashion, um, negative three times negative two thirds, A. Okay. okay. And then I'm adding negative three times one fifth and then minus six A. So I keep going step by step. I combine any like terms that I have so like terms here are 2a, negative 6a gives me negative 4a. And then negative 3 times 1 fifth is negative 3 fifths. Okay. And when we do this, we usually write our answer with the term that has the variable first. 
Um, and if you have two variables, then it's kind of up to you, but I usually go in alphabetical order. So now that you've learned or taken the notes on expanding algebraic expressions, you're gonna do these three problems on the left side of your book. The first one, I want you to use a bar model to show 1 fourth times x plus two. And then two and three, you're just going to simplify in the more traditional method, two times the quantity 2a plus 3b, and then plus 5b. And then five times the quantity 2x minus one, plus three times the quantity four minus x. And when you finish those three problems, so show your teacher, um, and then you can move on to the practice problems in the textbook. Thank you.